We plow, scrape, drill. We break down and uproot with hands, tools, and equipment of all size, shape, and design. We change, we repurpose, we invent, we create, we live. We live through the offerings of this grand estate, the inclines, the boundless distance. We borrow from this rich granite plate that, through time, matured with gifts that fill our appetite to shelter, nurture, feed, contribute, survive. If ever there is one that is truly altruistic, it is the earth. And for all it gives, our only responsibility is to protect and care for this giver. This is Jamaica Magazine, and I'm Theodore Henry reminding you to be a friend to the earth. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez, and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, April 5. Local businesses operating in special economic zones are being encouraged to join the Global Alliance with the World Free Zone Organization. The Global Alliance will be launched in June at this year's staging of the World Free Zone Organization Annual International Conference and Exhibition in Montego Bay. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, is among stakeholders who have agreed that the Alliance will provide greater opportunities for members. He says the benefits include access to an audience of multinationals, multilaterals and support organizations. Minister Hill was speaking at a JIS think tank to promote the event. The World Free Zone Organization has made it very clear that they want at least 60% of the participants at the conference on June 13th to 17th to come from the Americas. Uh, they want to make sure the World Free Zone Organization grows its um, relationship in these countries. It is their intention to provide far more uh, support and development for free trade zones, special economic zones, um, uh, foreign trade zones as the North Americans refer to it, um, to help to build the resilience, sustainability of zones across the world. The Jamaica Special Economic Zone Authority represents the national contact for Jamaica and will facilitate all businesses joining. Stakeholders are being encouraged to register for the conference at AICE2022.com. It will be held under the theme, Zones 2022, your partner for resilience, sustainability and prosperity. The Tourism Ministry is looking to create greater inclusivity among local coffee supply chains while encouraging the growth of local coffee entrepreneurs. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says this is necessary based on the growing demand for our coffee and coffee-infused products. He was speaking with JIS News at the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival on Saturday. The purpose of this, of course, is to showcase you know, the varied elements of the coffee value chain and to show the quality of the product that we have as a destination and hopefully to invite others to come and to taste and to enjoy the values of uh, coffee. According to Minister Bartlett, having a diversified coffee industry will elevate the experience of visitors while expanding the value chain. We're making the point that the demand for coffee is exponential. You know, um, it, it, it tends to infinity. Yes. All right. So, so make more coffee. Absolutely. And yeah. I think I produce think... more coffee. The Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival is organized by the Tourism Enhancement Fund, Tourism Linkages Network and other stakeholders. The annual event aims to showcase Jamaica's tradition of coffee production in the Blue Mountain area, coffee-related products and the diversity of the bean and its byproducts. In light of ongoing expansion of the hotel industry, students are being encouraged to seek a career path in tourism. Director of the Jamaica Center for Tourism Innovation and Craft Development Institute, Carol Rose Brown, points out that approximately 15,000 rooms are being added to the sector, most of them in Trelawney. You may not know this, but Trelawney is about to become the parish with the greatest number of, of hotel rooms in Jamaica. We have to find people to work in these industries, in these, in these hotels. Tourism is not simply about serving drinks or making beds. Tourism welcomes every single kind of person you can think of who would like to work in any kind of industry. That person can find a place in tourism. 
She was speaking at the Let's Talk Tourism panel discussion held at the Montego Bay Convention Center recently. The event, which targeted secondary and tertiary level students, was hosted by the tourism product development company under the theme, Diversifying Skill Sets for the Evolving Tourism Industry. And finally, Jamaica's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, has been selected as a candidate for the post of Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Her candidacy was announced in a statement issued on Friday from the Office of the Prime Minister. Minister with Responsibility for Information Robert Morgan asserts that Minister Johnson-Smith is eminently qualified for the post, having held several crucial leadership positions, both regionally and internationally. Her appointments include serving as president of the OACPS Council of Ministers and chair of CARI Forum and the CARICOM Council on Trade and Economic Development. Senator Johnson-Smith was also the first Jamaican foreign minister to be invited to G7 and G20 ministerial meetings, and she represents Jamaica as the African, Caribbean and Pacific ACP coordinator within the World Trade Organization. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has expressed confidence in Minister Johnson-Smith's abilities to build bridges and consensus, bringing governments and peoples to a common understanding. A decision on the appointment of a Secretary General is to be made during the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting to take place from June 20 to 25 in Kigali, Rwanda. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. Without a doubt, Tourism is Jamaica's number one industry, and our dedicated workers are its greatest asset. Jamaica would not be the heartbeat of the world without you. As the industry rebounds from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, we truly need all hands on deck, yours included. Vaccination holds the hope for tourism's full recovery. In addition to COVID-19 protocols, it is the only comprehensive way to fight the pandemic and save lives. I am therefore urging every worker in the tourism and hospitality industry, in all the subsectors, including accommodation, attractions, entertainment, transportation and craft, to do your part and get vaccinated. Do it for yourself, your family, your workplace, and your community. Do it for Jamaica, land we love. Stay safe. Get vaccinated. Producers, or autotrophs, are organisms that make their own food. Way back then, they whispered unheard vows with the earth, and even now their union continue to thrive, growing and filling our baskets. This made possible through the gift of the soil. To provide jobs for persons, you know, yeah, it, it lets me feel like, you know, I'm really contribute, contributing to the economy of the country. Um, it's, just, it's just a good feeling and to produce the, um, quality products, you know, to compete with the, 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 the international um, market and to produce goods that actually look much better than imported goods, it's a good feeling for me. Agroinvestment Corporation continue to scout for lands in Jamaica that are best suited for agricultural production through the National Land Agency and the Commission of Lands, and also with private enterprises. So wherever there is unused government lands or private lands, Agroinvestment Corporation will profile these lands. So by now, we should all be aware of the benefits of leasing lands from the government. But once you've leased the land, how do you maximize returns? Well, knowing the soil type is important. For instance, did you know that over in the Ebony Park Spring Plain Agro Park, the soil type impacts the kinds of crops that can be planted there? Ebony Park Agro Park um, is about 1,100 acres, and likewise the Spring Plain, and that's roughly all the lands within there. There are areas of um, non arable areas, but there are arable areas. Arable areas amount on the Ebony Park side to about 800 acres. There's a lot of different soil types, predominantly Bonnygate clay loam. Uh, 
basically anything can grow here. Uh, once it requires a pH of about 6.5 to about 7, um, there are pockets where the pH might fall to about 5.5, 5.8. So if there's a crop that needs to be having a lower pH, it could, soil could be amended to facilitate that. Um, but basically anything will grow. So let's revisit our checklist. We've applied and submitted all the necessary documentations, including proof of our capacity to invest in the land. We've learned about soil types and pH balances in the soil. What's next after you've been approved? They would assign you a plot number or they'd give you a designated area to where you'd be assigned. Um, I guess you'd view it to see maybe what you'd need to do. Uh, if it needs a bit of clearing, you might want to look at that, how you go about doing that. Um, you'd be advised as to the best way to get that done. You might want to go to the NIC um, because our water is pressurized and so the NIC supplies it. So a part of your contract would give you the ability to go to NIC with tenure of land and then they would then come and put your meter on so that you get ready supply for water. We also offer tractor services to plow, harrow, um, farrow and other activities that you might want, rotovate and so on for your lands. So we'll be able to do that. Uh, once you do that, we could tell you of maybe different cycles, crop cycles where you might want to plant best time for certain crop. You might be able to go out of these seasons, but at least we'll be able to tell you that this crop does well in a particular season. The risk might be higher in another season, but so might be the returns. So you could get advice as to that. So local advice will be there ready for you. Meet Henry Givens, a youth farmer who is a beneficiary of this initiative. He started out acquiring just five acres of land, and today he is up to 15. Givens plants various crops at different stages, including Scotch bonnet pepper, sweet pepper, sweet potato, and Maruga red watermelons, as well as slicing and plummy tomatoes. Leasing land from the government, it, it, it is actually, it, it is beneficial. And um, at the point where I would actually want to lease more, if available, you know, I am not employed otherwise. Um, so it is my, it allows me to take care of my two babies, um, and it allows me to eat and you know survive. So it is something very beneficial, I would say. Life here at Ebony Park, it, it's it's twofold. You know, it's good sometimes, and sometimes it's challenging. One, you know persons around. Some, some persons they know what to do with their crops for example and they don't want to do it. Um, so, so sometimes you know we have a lot of pest and disease outbreak and some persons just don't want to invest the funds or do what is right to actually you know make the agro park much better and a much cleaner environment. And then you know also um, the, the whole, sometimes there's a major issue with the whole irrigation system. Um, it costs a lot sometimes because even if you look into the pepper field you know, sun scalding is a result of a lack of water supply sometimes. But you know, it's a blessing, you know, and you know, there is not only negative because, you know, once you have irrigation, then, you know, without the irrigation, we, we, I couldn't do anything like this, none at all. Farming can be an expensive venture, but it's also beneficial. As a youth farmer, the challenges may not even be financial. Some older persons, because they're so, well, relatively young, they don't want to work with you because they said they don't want to work with a younger person. However, for do you know, sometimes it's good to know that you know, for some persons that really can't afford to go into the farming as deep, that you can provide them with not only a job, but you can also assist them with um, technical, you know, technical advice to improve their smaller production um, that they that they do as well. My advice to younger farmers or investors is that they should not be discouraged or swayed from agriculture. It is something that can be beneficial, and you know. Is a, good, is a good way to make a good um, foundation for themselves and their families. So it's something that they should look into and be strong about it. That's the only way we can build our country. While life's compass navigates you through the then, the now, and tomorrow, I do hope the tides wash you to one of these spaces where you will be hugged with peace, quiet, renewal, stillness, and tranquility. We're here in St. Thomas at one of the oldest botanical gardens in the Western Hemisphere, 
the Bath Botanical Gardens. This is the beginning of a journey to discover the scientific, cultural and historical value of public gardens. Come now, let's explore these national and natural treasures. So what differentiates a public garden from a regular place where flowers and trees grow? A public garden is an institution where plants are collected for the purpose of education, research, conservation and recreation. Along with Bath, there are three other public gardens on the island. Castleton in St. Mary and Hope and Sincona Gardens, both in St. Andrew. The public can access these venues at no cost. Today, we'll be exploring Bath and Castleton. Except for Hope Gardens, the Public Gardens Division of the Ministry of Agriculture, Commerce, Industry and Fisheries, MICAF, preserves and maintains these natural beauties. The objective then of the Public Garden is to conserve the biodiversity of plant life in the island. So we are here to ensure that the plants are maintained, they are conserved, they are preserved, that research is conducted on them so that generations and generations will have that area. Bath Botanical Garden was the first public garden established on the island. As a research site, imported plants were introduced here to assess how they would adapt to the tropical environment. Food that Jamaicans love, like bread food, was first introduced to this garden by Captain Bly. He came here with the bread fruit, the Aki and Otiti apple, those are the famous ones. Other plants were introduced to the garden that people see all the time, the bougainvilleas, the crotons, all of these were first introduced to the gardens. Constant flooding from the nearby sulfuric spring destroyed many of the plants and led to a decline of the garden. Though nowhere near its former glory, the space still provides the opportunity for persons to come and enjoy nature's bounty. Bath is a beautiful garden. It's one of the gardens that has uh, the atmosphere that you come in here. It's a cool, calming environment that I would encourage anybody to come. If you want to study, you can come here and study. If you want to just come out with your church group, want to come out with any little grouping, or even yourself and a friend can come and walk and learn about the different plants that are in the garden. Bath's fall saw the rise of this location as the premier growing spot for exotic plants in Jamaica. The garden you're visiting is Castleton Botanical Garden. It was owned by a man called Colonel Castle. Colonel Castle traveled all over the country and bring plants from different countries and plant here. So when he get old, he donated to the government of Jamaica. The government finished cultivate it and give it its name, Castleton Botanical Garden. Here are many of the plants introduced on the island in the 19th and 20th century. These include poinciana, bombay mango, navel orange and tangerine. One time it had over 400 palms. I think we're down to 180 species. So you have an area dedicated to the various palms that were introduced into the gardens. We also have rare fruits like mangosteen and they have another one, the real velvet apple that you wouldn't find anywhere else. This is the phoenix palm. When you knock it like this with a stone, it gives you sound. Why it gave you that sound? Because it's hollow inside. The more it grows old, the more it expands hollow. Educational tours are just some of the offerings here at Castleton. 
but you can stop by for a swim if that's your thing. Perhaps a cookout is more your flavor or set up a spot on the lawn and bask in the glory of the great outdoors. Our expedition of the historic Bath and diverse Castleton Gardens ends here. Sincona and Hope await, but in another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Until then, keep looking out. All Jamaicans to know that child abuse is not just an issue for the government, it's an issue for all Jamaicans. So we need everybody to help us to protect our children. If you know of a child who is being victimized, a child who is abused or neglected, just make that report so we can get that child the help they need. Calling or reporting is easy. All you have to do is remember to call 211. If you are an adult, if you are a child, if you are in church, in your community group, wherever you are, once you are aware there's a child who is in need of care and protection, just be the one and call 211. There's magic from the core to the peak. So you know it's true when I say we brush shoulders with magical beings daily. Their wands of choice being brooms, rakes, and believe it or not, their hands. There is no bibbidi bobbidi boo however, there is in its place passion and a sense of duty, which undoubtedly make their magic true. Once upon a time in a land far away from a fairy tale, were a people who lived the way you and I do, but a little differently. Much like the shoemaker and the elves, these street fairies don't leave beautiful pairs of shoes behind, but their art shares some similarities, and it's nonetheless worthy of recognition. Good night, I'm Dana Anderson, shovel user, shovel and drum, clean up Jamaica. I'm working in company eight years now. I like the job, keep the place tidy and clean. They always said to me, they say, this is not a woman's work, but a woman has to do what a woman has to do, eh? You have to work for yours, eh? Nobody ain't gonna give you nothing, so you have to work for it. Yeah, enough of the woman you work hard and plenty of the man them. I get used to my work still, you know, something I feel not different from the man them. At the end of the day, I will bread where I work for. So any work, any work for woman. Woman do man work nowadays. I'm all right with my work. Yeah, yeah I can provide for myself, my nephew, my niece, my child. She don't really like it. Like my dad out here, you know, she rather my dad would cheat, but I have to make ends meet. I have to work. I have to pay my bills them. But they don't give me nothing. I have to work my own. But people that see me and want to style me and this, because I throw a truck work me doing them things there. But I don't really watch my face. Because I know, say, when my money enough, you see me? I want to burn fire upon this whole foolishness that people talk from time to time about. If they don't litter, people don't get work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying for my time. But they can do better still. Plenty of them can do better still. Enough of them like Reno and enough don't like Reno. Because sometimes we have to do with all the truck like all that. So now they don't say, we don't move from there, so we don't think in truck and them things. But we don't care about that. That's our work. When you litter, you waste the resource of your country. You make life more difficult for yourself and, the, and your fellow men. And you destroy the aesthetic, the beauty of our country that we boast about so much. We are cleaning up Jamaica. And without cleaning up not Jamaica, wiper, disease and germs are broke out. So everybody who works with solid waste, important people. Them. All are important. Differently from the sweep, the sweep of them. We don't like the garbage bag up and we go through it, it more easy after we. Well, more, more time we come out and have to wait on the sweep of them like on the just seat right now. We have to wait till the street sweep up, but if it's back up, Somebody it's more easier, easier for it. Just the fact that you are generating solid waste, I ask you to just take some time to package it properly 
so that it gives us more ease of cleaning. And it also helps the side men, side women. They are human beings too. Their job is already very difficult. Don't make it more difficult for them by giving them extra work to do. It is very tough on them. The job is difficult. You know, it's not just about lifting things, putting a truck, but some of the things they encounter out here. Bags with human feces, just common occurrence, especially in the market district. The smell of urine is everywhere, and it's in the, 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 the solid waste that they're picking up. All sort of meat cuttings, fish bone, fish back, fish gut, just about anything that people don't want, and they have to pick it up. They have to face it. A certain time at the night, when we reach certain hours at the night, like at 3 30, 4 o'clock, one man can strike and we have to run left the yard with some of the time, and all them things then. And come back around and take it up, see, because we cannot leave it. You see me? We cannot leave it. And we don't let them keep Jamaica beauty and clean. Well, I stay out of them way and I'm not really ghost for them though, I still think they're happening. I just stay by myself, each time I look at corner. And yet, despite the tough nature of the job, these people show up not just for work, but they show up and work. We're a backbone of the company you now. Who clean your rubbish at my backbone? We're the most important people in the company. How we clean up work, enough. Mess and good rubbish, bad rubbish, all different kind of rubbish. I believe deep in my heart that if you talk about heroes and heroines, our side men and side women are right up there with any because of the human service that they provide and in very tough circumstances to keep Jamaica clean. Day after day, night after night, they are out and about, they roll up the sleeve and notwithstanding all that they have to face, their head is down and they are going relentlessly in pursuit of that clean Jamaica. I laud them. I lift my heart to them. They are good people. I just hope that more, more and more people will see them for who they are. People who are there to safeguard the health of the nation. They are the NSWNA. Without them, we are nothing. Yeah, I love my world. I love yeah. I love playing the show. I don't get me used to that time. I don't get me used to that time. And as sunbeams break the night sky and the stars and moon bid their goodbye, the city smiles. The offspring of the earth are perfectly flawed, and their purpose, like rivers, ribbon across this space we call home, abundant with potential. And while we have tapped into so much, there still remains depths untouched, wonders untold, charms concealed. And I, in my corner, with my slice of grandeur, continue to be amazed at how intentional it all is. I'm in constant awe of how the earth has stood the test of time and our curiosities. It continues to provide and, in its own way, evolve as we make new discoveries that help sustain life. Something to think about, yes? While you do, share your thoughts with us on our social media pages. Also, you can visit our website and YouTube channel for even more filling content. The team here at the JIS continues to create edifying productions for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, I'm Theodore Henry, reminding you to be a friend to the earth. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.